paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. This is about vintage as new. The geniuses in fashion who are inspired by the past and bring it bang up to date. To be classified as vintage, you have to be 20 years from the present date. If you are from before then, you are sadly an antique. However, clothing doesn't necessarily have to be from the past to evoke the mood of the time. Vivian Westwood, the grand dame of retro, punk, tartan and exquisite cutting. She was one of the first designers to look to the past, capture its spirit and transform it into the now. Using traditional British fabrics and tailoring to make an impact on the catwalk forged a unique identity. Her secret was 17th and 18th century cloth cutting techniques, which when coupled with her punk past had bombastic effect. Combining the past with modern design is an idea also shared by Karl Lagerfeld. He coined the term New Vintage at his 2012 Paris Couture show. The designs looked back to those of Coco Chanel and brought them up to date. Nostalgic yet current, the show won applause from fashion's elite. Looking to the past is not only something for the designers to do. Actress Scarlett Johansson evokes the glamour of the 50s. Dolce & Gabbana reference Marilyn Monroe with Scarlett in their 2012 perfume campaign. The hair and the red lips hark back to those golden films such as Niagara and The Seven Year Itch. I had garlic dressing at dinner, but he'll never know because I stay kissing sweet the new Dazzle Dent way. Scarlett, in the latest campaign, wears a 1940s-inspired Dolce & Gabbana black lace dress alongside Matthew McConaughey. Emma Watson augments her grown-up look with a splash of vintage. She famously struck red carpet gold in an Aussie Clark dress, despite a hailstorm trying to ruin the proceedings. She also turned heads at the 2013 Cannes Film Festival when she became the epitome of vintage glamour in Chanel Couture. The trend of wearing vintage clothes came into being in the early 60s, when fashion was influenced by French romantic literature and art school culture. Suddenly, young girls were raiding their granny's wardrobes for Edwardian lace dresses, petticoats and blouses. The linear style and short skirts of the mod era were softened with frilly blouses and later with Afghan waistcoats and Indian long jackets and dresses. Mick Jagger personified this look in the Hyde Park concert of 1969. And Fleetwood Mac's Stevie Nicks is seldom seen outside of this attire. One designer understands vintage as more than just a reboot of ideas. Vivian Westwood took British heritage and made it her own in a series of spectacular looks. Her successful career as one of Britain's most important designers now finds her ironically as part of that heritage. Understanding her past explains why she dresses today's most daring celebrities. Feeling out of place at Harrow School of Art, Vivian left and opened a shop called Sex with Malcolm McLaren at World's End on the King's Road, London. It was these years whilst experimenting with designs, she became a leading name in youth and street culture fashion. She tailored the outfits for McLaren's band, the Sex Pistols, defining the punk look. Although punk's arrival terrified the more conservative of the country, Vivian had looked at British history for her designs. Her use of tartan, which became synonymous with punk, was inspired by the country's Celtic past. Tartan is a signature look for the designer, who is often dubbed the Queen of Tartan. Vivian studied the cuts and designs from the past for her first catwalk show, Pirates. The spectacular show referenced 18th century men's clothing and fused it with Native American style, creating the look of the new romantic movement, notably Adam Ant's look. From being the anti-establishment, she has now embraced traditional materials such as Harris tweed and flannel, which form the basis of some of her collections. The traditional British fabrics have been worn for generations, and Vivian used their vibrant colours to make an affectionate parody of the landed gentry. 
Today, Vivian even dresses members of the royal family, maybe even Prince George one day. Looking to the past emphasizes the importance of politics, and Vivian has never shied away from them. She has supported causes in person and on the catwalk by either attending rallies or bringing the message into her shows. In 2007, she created the manifesto Active Resistance to Propaganda, a declaration against climate change. Most recently, she has supported Bradley Manning, the soldier who leaked documents to WikiLeaks and was sentenced to 35 years in prison. Vivian dressed models in her 2013 show with images of his face emblazoned with the word truth. You get burnt for telling the truth. Vivian Westwood has remained the designer's go-to if you favor fashion with a nod to the past. Dita Von Teese, the queen of the burlesque scene, has always worn Westwood. Another fan is actress Helena Bonham Carter, rarely seen without a Westwood outfit on the red carpet. May Vivian, the queen of punk, reign on. Let's take a look at the vintage-inspired leading ladies of pop. Lily Allen was a breath of fresh air to the British pop scene. The LDN singer sold multi-platinum quantities of both her albums, but she also made an impact in the world of fashion. Lily's style was a mash of ball gowns and trainers, a little like Cindy Lauper, but she soon evolved into the chic woman we know today. She favored vintage Chanel, which led to a strong relationship with Karl Lagerfeld. He made her the face of Chanel handbags, and Lily won every girl's dream when he designed her wedding dress. Wow. More vintage princesses coming up. Lucy in Disguise was conjured up by Lily Allen and her sister, Sarah Owen. It is much more than your usual vintage shop, as the clothes and accessories are curated by Sarah and have that glamour touch. Hi, I'm Sarah. This is my vintage shop, Lucy in Disguise. So I love anything with sequins, so for me this is the perfect dress, especially the big full skirt, brilliant for dancing the night away. So this is a lovely little little black dress, LBD. Love this version because I'm really keen on the bow at the back, the kind of fun frill party element of it. This black velvet Christian Dior dress is just right for when Sarah hosts musical soirees for her special clients. Back to our countdown, and coming in at number four, it's Adele. There's a fire starting in my heart, reaching a fever pitch, and it's bringing me out the dark. The girl from Tottenham that took the world by storm, Adele oozes 60s style. She may have sold millions of albums, but she still likes a good bargain. A fan of the vintage markets and shops, Adele still hunts out gems from the past, but being world famous, she has to send her stylist, Gael Paul, to do that for her. Gael knows that Adele has a fondness for Johnny Cash and his wife, June, so often returns with the best black dresses the retro boutiques can offer. For Elle magazine, Adele wore a black lace vintage Alberta Ferretti dress, sported smoky eyes and a beehive wig in a shoot reminiscent of the great Dusty Springfield. Dusty really defined her era with her strong look. Her blonde beehive, panda eyes and lavish dresses were just as impactful as those melancholic songs. Dusty had a collection of wigs and even named her three favorites, Scylla, Lulu and Sandy. Adele also names her wigs, with one called June and another Jackie. We wonder if she named her signature beehive after Dusty. Number three coming soon, but now we feast our eyes on the craziest looks out there. Here we have an outfit inspired by the Shazam app. Call an ambulance, we've got a fashion victim. I think this might be a Google Glass prototype. Ah yes, a glamorous dress and a salad spinner. Perfect for the modern woman. Objects in the rearview mirror are closer than they appear. And let the beat control your body. Come in, number seven. Your time is up. 
I've heard of trailer trash, but this must be trawler trash. Beards and red lipstick, together at last. Elton John called, he wants his glasses back. Let the beat control your body. Still to come, we check out the films that inspired the retro look and visit the shop where it all began for Vivian Westwood. Now, at number three in our vintage countdown, it's Lana Del Rey. The self-proclaimed gangster Nancy Sinatra wears her influences on her sleeve. Lana has not been long on the music scene, but has quickly established herself as one of the queens of the retro look. Her videos and sound hark back to days gone by, but it is her 50s and 60s style which channels old school stars like Brigitte Bardot and Jane Birkin that has won her contracts with labels like H&M, Jaguar and Mulberry. Mulberry designer Emma Hill was so taken with Lana that she designed the Delray Mulberry bag, which became a bestseller for the brand. Spending time on the front row of fashion shows, Lana is a fan of Vivian Westwood. At the 2012 Brit Awards, she smouldered in a startling Westwood dress as she collected her award. Her nostalgia of Hollywood glamour was put to effect when she arrived at the Cannes premiere of The Great Gatsby. Her monochrome brocade gown, complete with waves in her hair, made her look every inch the star. No wonder there are rumours that she will soon be gracing the silver screen. One of the first films to present vintage as new was one that would have lasting style appeal. The most memorable and beautiful outlaw, Bonnie Parker, as played by Faye Dunaway in the 1967 film Bonnie and Clyde, broke the mold of how to dress a period film. Although set in the 1930s, costume designer Theodora Van Ronkel distilled the essence of period whilst updating it to what was happening in fashion in the 1960s. You're a smart fella. You sure do know a lot about automobiles, don't you? Faye Dunaway wore 30s A-line skirts and suits, but with loose-fitting tops. Most memorable were Dunaway's beret and scarf in the film, which made Bonnie Parker iconic, giving her a cool beatnik edge. The beret had been a trend for women in the 1930s, as worn by Joan Crawford and Ginger Rogers, but had fallen out of fashion. Suddenly, every woman wanted a beret, to the point where the French had to increase production to meet demand. When Faye Dunaway attended the French premiere, a crowd of thousands had gathered outside the Cinématique in Paris just to meet the star, many with bobbed haircuts and berets. When Brigitte Bardot dressed as Bonnie for her duet with Serge Gainsbourg in Bonnie and Clive, it was as if the film's French New Wave influences had gone full circle. Theodora Van Runkel was a self-taught designer, and the film won her an Oscar nomination. She continued to work with Dunaway on the Thomas Crown Affair and the arrangement. Her big claim to fame were her designs for The Godfather Part II. Fashionable women have been experimenting with menswear for decades. Marlena Dietrich wore ties and top hats in the 1930s, whilst Catherine Hepburn donned loose-fitting suits and crisp white shirts in the 1940s. But Diane Keaton's Annie Hall introduced something new. Her clothes were about self-expression. It was that personal identity that Woody Allen recognized in Diane Keaton. Bye. <laughs> When the costume designer objected to what Diane was wearing on set, Woody said, leave her, she's a genius, let her wear what she wants. What a dumb thing to say, right? I mean, you say it. Her ensembles combine tailored or typically formal pieces like trousers and button-down shirts with a relaxed fit. Overnight, Diane became the face of menswear-inspired fashion. You don't have to look far to recognize hints of Annie on the runway today. Her spirit lives on in bowler hats, crisp white shirts and dapper vests. And I love what you're wearing. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, well, it's, uh, this is, uh, this ties a present from Grammy Hall. Marie Antoinette could be argued as being the world's first fashionista. So when Sofia Coppola decided to make a film based on the life of the last Queen of France, she had to call in all the favors. In charge of the costume design was Milena Cananero, who would go on to win an Oscar for her work. 
The task was so huge that the costume department needed six assistant designers and ten rental houses to stock the pastel dresses and sky-high wigs. Milena brought the past up to date by asking Manolo Blahnik to design hundreds of specially made shoes, which became very sought after. Also look out for a pair of powder blue Converse that show up in the film. A new Converse was old, but not that old. The film was so fashion forward, it inspired a Vogue cover, and Christian Louboutin produced a line of shoes for the Queen. These are still called Louis heels today. The fashions of the 1920s are some of the most glamorous, so no wonder they keep coming back. In 2011, the artist cleaned up at the Oscars, and a notable award went to costume designer Mark Bridges. He had the tough job of trying to make actors stand out in a monochrome world, but he pulled it off spectacularly. Inspired by stars such as Clara Bow, Joan Crawford and Mary Pickford, he dressed Berenice Bejot in a textured Jazz Age wardrobe. His team would find vintage pieces, but then rework them in silk crepe de chine to make them look fresh and original. The hair in the film was partly inspired by the enigmatic Louise Brooks. The 1920s star is most well known for her role in Pandora's Box. At the time, her style was experimental and daring, and even today it still makes a statement. The popularity of the artist influenced the following spring 2012 collections of designers Marc Jacobs, Ralph Lauren and Alberta Ferretti. They each showed slim, straight flapper silhouettes and Art Deco black and gold beaded sheaths at their shows. It seems the Roaring Twenties will be here to stay. At number two is Taylor Swift, who has a unique personal style. She has a knack for modernizing vintage classic pieces and has crafted a look all her own. After the success of her album Red, which has gone on to sell over 6 million copies, Taylor has moved away from her country style roots and looked back to the 50s for her appearances on the red carpet. Flared floral printed frocks and ladylike kitten heels, all topped off with flicky blonde bangs and sultry red lipstick. She looks to Audrey Hepburn for her dress choices, Marilyn Monroe in her lipstick choices, and strangely, Minnie Mouse for her love of polka dots. Vivian Westwood's World's End shop is a unique place. It is one of the few shops with both a fascinating history as well as ethos. Just as the huge clock on the front turns backwards, let's rewind and go back into the past. Early in Vivian's career, she took over the back of this shop with Malcolm McLaren to sell rock and roll records. It was a successful venture, so they took over the whole shop to sell Teddy Boy clothing and rebranded it Let It Rock. This began a series of makeovers for the space as Vivian and Malcolm adapted it to what they sold. It became too fast to live, too fast to die when they moved into a James Dean-inspired leather direction. It was 1977 when it famously became seditionaries that brought about the fashion for which most people know Westwood and McLaren, punk. The trousers all come with a little loincloth on the back. Everybody wants to know what that's for. It's just a loincloth. It's just a gesture of some kind of tribalism, really. Today, the shop is known as the World's End, taken from the area of Chelsea. It has not changed from the original pirate galleon design. Here is one of her recent red collections. Sometimes you can find items from this at the World's End. Rounding up our pop vintage countdown is number one. Have faith, it's Paloma. The days were long and the nights so cold. The pages turn and the trail unfolds. It left me far in earth, lady. Ever since Paloma Faith burst onto the scene, music has been a more colourful place. Her burlesque cabaret past may be behind her, but she has maintained the vintage look associated with that scene. She favours vintage boutiques to find the clothes that emulate her style icons, Marilyn Monroe and Marlena Dietrich. Paloma is also a fan of Westwood. She chose Westwood Couture for the Brit Awards in 2011 and returned to the event in 2013 with another stunning Westwood silk dress. When she and Vivian were brought together for a charity event, they looked like mother and daughter. 
big stars tend to have a walk-in wardrobe, but Paloma boasts a live-in wardrobe. Due to the amount of clothes she owns, Paloma has rails throughout her home. Singer Paloma Faith is the toast of the fashion and film world, buddies with Quentin Tarantino and fated by Tom Ford. Ford chose two of her songs for his London Fashion Week show after seeing her on the red carpet of the Baptist, describing her as someone he couldn't take his eyes off. Paloma's beginnings were less glitzy than they are today, but she still tried her best to make them fantastical. At the age of eight, she dressed as Charlie Chaplin, and her bedroom was covered in posters of Marilyn Monroe. She loved the way Marilyn accentuated her curves, a rule that Paloma still goes by today. After moving to London, Paloma worked at the lingerie shop Agent Provocateur for three years. Her vintage style fitted in with the brand of the shop. She looked to heroines like Edith Piaf, Billie Holiday, Mae West, and Josephine Baker. Although she now has a stylist who sources her designer attire, she still shops for her own vintage. Blackout 2 in Covent Garden is one of her favorites. Another shop with exceptional vintage pieces is Pop-Up Vintage in Chelsea. Known for her spectacular shows, Paloma designs her sets and dresses her band. When on stage, she has worn some show-stopping pieces, like this mirror dress by Petra Stores, but admits when she gets home, she'll relax in 1940s men's trousers and braces. Tell me about it. I wear those as pajamas. This girl doesn't just wear vintage, she lives it too. She once took a boyfriend on a surprise date in a Victorian horse and carriage to dinner. Apparently, he was a bit embarrassed. We think Paloma needs to meet her match. Shane Chaplin isn't still around. Join us next time for Passion for Fashion and check out more stories from the realms of glamour, catwalk and the red carpet.